Hello and uh, welcome once again to this course on game theory and mechanism design. In this course, we will be discussing these two topics, game theory and mechanism design, as mentioned in the title, in, almost in equal proportions. Uh, this uh, lecture is intended to give you a very broad overview of what this course is all about. Now, uh, our focus in this course will be more on mechanism design and game theory will be a preparatory step to uh, learn the mechan mechanism design part of this course. Now, what is mechanism design? It is often called the engineering approach to economic theory. And this is, uh, this is defined by uh, Eric Maskin, who is one of the recipients of the 2007 uh, Nobel Prize in Economics. Uh, for his contribution in, uh, in mechanism design theory. And indeed, uh, uh, mechanism design is an engineering approach. So what do we typically do in, uh, in usual engineering courses? So typical engineering courses always have two components to it. One is the analysis component and other is the synthesis component. So let's look at certain examples. So let's say the classical uh, engineering course of uh, circuit analysis and synthesis. Now, this is a very popular course in electrical engineering. Uh, in the analysis part of this, uh, of this course, what is typically done is you are given a bunch of resistors, capacitors and they are connected over a circuit and you are asked to find out what is the voltage or current in different parts of this, uh, of this circuit or the network. On the other hand, when you go for a circuit synthesis course, it uh, tries to give you the objective that we want certain desired voltage or current in some part of this uh, of this network or the circuit, and you'll have to syn synthesize the circuit using those resistors, capacitors, and other uh, equipments, other uh, components, uh, to get that desired voltage. Similarly, when we talk about algorithms courses. So they uh, typically in uh, design of algorithms you are uh, you are given a specific algorithm and you are trying to f analyze that algorithm and find out different uh, parameters uh, different um, uh, matrix of that algorithm for instance complexity is one such matrix and in the design part of the algorithm you are trying to design an algorithm which will give a certain desired uh, complexity now, using these two examples, you can clearly see uh, what I mean by these uh, two uh, complementary approaches. And indeed, game theory and mechanism design are complementary approaches to each other. Uh, we'll see that uh, in the game theory part, we are going to give uh, a specific uh, strategic form uh, of, uh, of different players. And uh, we'll try to find out uh, by analyzing the game, what is the probable outcome which is the analysis part and in the uh, mechanism design part we will try to design a game uh, or synthesize a game uh, such that we get certain desirable outcomes. Now game theory as uh, uh, is defined as the, the, uh, the uh, theory where we uh, there are multiple individuals whom we will call agents or players uh, and who have potentially conflicting interest with each other and we are trying to give a kind of a predictive guarantee. So the setup uh, in game theory is the following. We have these multiple individuals and the, the important part is that they have conflicting objectives. Uh, we will soon discuss an example and we'll, uh, this will make clear what we mean. Uh, so these terms uh, like agents, players will be using interchangeably in this course. And this setup of uh, multiple uh, players or agents with their con conflicting objectives or their payoffs is what we will be calling a game uh, throughout this course. As I mentioned before, uh, in, a, in game theory part, which is the, the first part of this course, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll be giving a specific game or essentially start with a given game. We will try to find what is the most probable outcome of that game or maybe outcomes of that game. Uh, which will uh, depend on the responses of these agents or players. And this is the, uh, the, the first part, which is called the game theory uh, part. And uh, quite naturally, this is, this is the analysis component. And the guarantee that we are going to give here is essentially predictive. We are predicting what is going to happen in this game. Now, if, you, if we take the, the, the inverse uh, approach, where we want a specific reasonable outcome, and we want to find or build the game that yields 
those kind of desirable outcomes as the probable outcomes probable as we have defined in the first part that is the game theory part this uh, uh, type of uh, approach will be calling uh, that mechanism design and uh, quite naturally this is the synthesis part uh, as we have already discussed in the in the classical uh, uh, classical engineering courses and the approaches there will be prescriptive that is we are going to give a specific prescription how you should design this game such that you get all those uh, reasonable outcomes of uh, of that game now let's uh, let's uh, start with an example to to uh, illustrate all these points that i have made so far so the this game is called the neighboring uh, kingdoms dilemma if you search for it you can search with prisoners dilemma i have just uh, renamed it uh, slightly in order to make it more interesting in this context so suppose uh, we go back a little uh, little back in history so uh, this was the times when when kingdoms used to rule so suppose there are two kingdoms a and b and they have very limited uh, options or uh, resources to invest uh, they either can uh, invest on agriculture and therefore save people from starvation or they can invest in warfare and for the time being let's assume that uh, they cannot invest on both although there are possibilities and we'll also discuss uh, such uh, situations but for this example let's imagine either they can spend entirely on agriculture or entirely on warfare so if they invest on warfare what happens is they they are capable of um, defending themselves uh, because they they are raising a powerful army and also they can attack other kingdom uh, to ransack uh, their their produce whatever uh, and uh, get their land and wealth what uh, everything now one uh, important point that i would like to make here uh, is that uh, when uh, you look at this kind of a scenario uh, it is not only uh, sufficient to conclude what will happen uh, based on your own action so maybe if you, if you are one of these kingdoms and you are investing on agriculture you cannot be sure what will be your payoff because you do not know what the other um, kingdom is going to do if they invest on warfare then they might possibly attack your uh, your uh, kingdom and uh, you will have no defense because you have not invested in warfare so you will not be able to defend yourself uh, so all your produce agricultural produce will be taken away uh, and also your land will, will be lost so the outcome in this kind of a scenario depends not only the action picked by one of these uh, players or agents it is dependent on the action profile which means that the actions picked by both these agents so uh, to uh, represent this uh, more concretely and in a more uh, quantitative manner uh, let us uh, look at a matrix and this is how we'll be representing uh, this kind of games for a for a uh, for a while now so what does this uh, matrix say so there are uh, you can see there are uh, two rows here and these two rows represent the two available actions uh, um, of uh, of kingdom a the first player similarly these two uh, columns represent the actions that are available to the second player which is player b um, so, um, and the numbers in in each of this uh, in each of these boxes uh, actually represent uh, by some number. I mean, we are just using some representative number to uh, denote how how satisfied each of these individuals are. Um, so, if uh, suppose uh, agent A is picking agriculture and agent B is also picking agriculture. Then we are assuming that both of them will uh, save their um, their kingdom from uh, uh, from starvation, uh, the people of their kingdom from starvation. At the same time, because uh, both of them are choosing agriculture, nobody will attack each other, and therefore their their produce will remain with their uh, with themselves, and uh, both of them get some amount of uh, payoff, which we are representing by this number five. Fair enough. Now, if both of these uh, uh, kingdoms choose war. Um, then there won't be any agricultural produce because they have not invested anything on uh, agriculture. Uh, so, okay, so just to give you the context that this uh, each of this, uh, so in each of these boxes, we are putting two numbers. The first number is actually representing the utility or payoff. This is how we are going to uh, call this utility of the first player, in this case, player A. 
and the second number in this tuple is going to be the utility the second player which is player b and um, so uh, and that is uh, common in all these boxes now when we are uh, considering the war situation for both these uh, players uh, then they will uh, the only option they have is to attack the other other kingdom and to uh, loot their resources but the trouble is that uh, now the other kingdom is also investing in war so they will be able to defend themselves uh, so they will get some amount of payoff in the sense that they will not lose everything they will at least save their people and save their um, save their resources but uh, they will get much less payoff if they were investing in agriculture so that is represented by one and one in this case but imagine the situation one of this uh, uh, kingdom let's say kingdom a is investing in war and the other kingdom is investing in agriculture in that situation what will happen is this uh, 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 kingdom which chooses war that will go and attack the other uh, country uh, other uh, kingdom and uh, not only they will get their agricultural produce they will also get their wealth their uh, land and all those things uh, so possibly they will get a little higher payoff than what they were getting if they are choosing agriculture alone on the other hand the second player will choose uh, will get uh, zero payoff because uh, not only their agricultural producers were lost they were not able to defend themselves so they have actually lost their uh, their produce as well as their land and perhaps uh, human resources as well the similarly opposite thing happens when uh, a chooses agriculture and b chooses war this is a very symmetric game now what is the predictive guarantee that we can give in this kind of a scenario so you can see that uh, if the if a specific agent let's say agent a is uh, thinking about whether to go for agriculture or to war uh, it looks at what happens if the other agent is choosing agriculture versus uh, or war look uh, uh, in this uh, in this column uh, the column of agriculture uh, when player b is choosing agriculture you see that for player a it is ge getting a payoff of 5 when uh, it chooses agriculture uh, but it uh, gets six if it uh, chooses war so clearly war is a better option for uh, for this kingdom kingdom a when the other player is choosing agriculture now let's look at uh, the the other situation player b is choosing war then if it chooses agriculture then it gets nothing essentially it loses everything but if it goes for war uh, at least it can defend itself and uh, save its resources so again war is a better option so uh, we can conclude that no matter what the other player is choosing going for a war is a better option for both uh, for this player and you can use the same argument it's a symmetric game the same argument uh, for for player two that uh, when player a is choosing agriculture it is better for player b to choose war and similarly if the other player chooses war of course it is better for uh, for it to choose war so this is the way you should be uh, comparing so um, uh, putting everything together in summary we can say that a war comma war is the most predictable outcome even though it's not the most optimal outcome um, this uh, most optimal outcome would have been 5 comma 5 which is uh, both uh, of these kingdoms choosing agriculture but uh, personal greed and no communication between these two agents is essentially making uh, a worse outcome and that is what we are going to predict at least from this kind of a game so uh, and this is this is the reasonable outcome uh, you, you might not like the outcome but uh, this is what is uh, what is predicted via game theory uh, a game theorist will tell that this is uh, the most predictable outcome now uh, we have already discussed this so let's uh, make uh, the the terminology a little more formal because we'll be using this uh, over and over again in this course uh, so a game is a formal representation of the strategic interaction between multiple agents called players uh, the the choices that are available to these players are called actions in this uh, example the agriculture or war was two uh, possible actions now we'll sometimes call uh, what is the strategy uh, so the strategy I mean at this point it, it is a little more abstract because uh, we have used both strategy and actions as same 
uh, but in uh, in principle and we'll see uh, this in a, in some later examples that it is just a mapping from the state of the game to the set of actions so here we have the set of actions which are these two actions available to these players uh, and the state of the game was just one uh, one state which we have defined here but if there are multiple states of the game uh, then we define strategy as this mapping and we'll see examples later on in this course so uh, depending on the context uh, games ca can be represented in uh, represented in many ways and uh, the the most common two representations are called the normal form and extensive form representations um, the normal form games are typically used for representing games that uh, end in one round so uh, all, all the players choose their uh, actions or strategies and the game ends right after that Extensive form games are uh, kind of sequential games. Uh, one player uh, makes some move. Based on that, the second player makes some move and then first player makes a move again. So imagine a uh, game like chess, which is more, uh, 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 more succinctly represented in the form of an extensive form game, uh, extensive form representation of the game. Similarly, there are repeated games, stochastic games, and various other forms of games, which we'll not be discussing, at least in this course. So, game theory is the formal study of, uh, of strategic interaction between the players uh, that are called uh, rational and intelligent. Now, what does these two terms mean? Um, we call a player to be rational if uh, sh uh, that uh, player picks the actions to achieve uh, the most desired outcome for that agent. Right. So in this uh, example, we have always picked, uh, we have always assumed that the player are picking that actions which maximizes their utilities. So that is one way of representing rationality. And the second part uh, is, uh, is called intelligent, uh, intelligent agents. This is the assumption we make for, uh, for the players. Uh, a player will be called intelligent if she knows the rules of the game perfectly and picks the actions considering that there are other rational and intelligent players in the game. So this definition is a little uh, uh, circular uh, in nature, uh, but it is purposefully done, uh, done uh, in that way. So uh, it means that it does not only uh, consider its own uh, payoff maximizing uh, actions, uh, it also takes care of what will happen uh, in the game if there are other players who are also thinking in a very similar way like this player and in that case it will pick the actions which is not only just a just their own um, uh, utility maximizer but also something like a joint uh, maximizer of, of certain kind we will discuss this kind of points uh, uh, later on when we discuss equilibrium so equilibrium is a point you can uh, at least imagine that a, a point in this game, a predictable outcome from where uh, none of these players would like to deviate because uh, if they do any deviation unilaterally, then that will be not beneficial for them. So that is uh, that is intelligence. Uh, we'll see uh, um, the uh, the ramifications of this uh, and this uh, assumptions of rationality intelligence uh, when we discuss more examples. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to make uh, things a little uh, short and concrete, intelligence essentially implies that the player has sufficient computational ability to find uh, the optimal action, which is uh, which is the optimal against other players who are also of the same type. Uh, it's not only your unilateral. So this is the fundamental difference between uh, single agent uh, optimization versus multi-agent optimization. So in, uh, in classical artificial intelligence, you will find um, techniques which is trying to maximize, optimize uh, uh, certain things. But in, in game theory, we'll, uh, we are uh, uh, dealing with multiple agents and therefore uh, it is not um, meaningful to talk about an optimization which, uh, which has an objective function and you are trying to maximize that. Rather, you are trying to find an equilibrium of this game uh, which all this rational and intelligent player will will achieve and that is that is a fundamental difference in in game theory 